Shall I start now? Yeah, go ahead. I think we can start. Yes. Okay. Good evening to all. I am Pradeep Kumar, who is working as a assistant professor and faculty in charge for IHMR Bangalore. Today, I'm, I'll be moderating this session. Um, for the session, uh, Healthcare Industry 4.0, uh, which is saving um, life using technology. Um, this webinar is organized by IHMR Bangalore in association with BNM IT, with the coordination of Dr. Jyoti R, um, who is associate professor who is working with BNM IT Bank. So in this context, uh, uh, what we are doing in IHMR, IHMR Bangalore, a brief introduction. We have started in 2004. IHMR Bangalore is a specialized institution in management research and post graduation uh, in uh, by pro by providing PGDM in healthcare sector domain. And we are ranked as a top management college by Higher Education uh, Review magazine by the year 2017-18. And also we received a national award for excellence in education in the category of educational institution uh, with best academic and industry interface by World Education Congress in 2020. And also we are accredited as a consultancy organization by uh, NABH, uh, also by NABH and QCI. And we are working with academics, research, consultancy, learning and development. These are all the four verticals we are focused on. In academics, uh, we are providing PGDM course in hospital management for two years full-time course. We are having four different specializations, hospital management, health management, health IT management, pharmaceutical management. When it comes to research, we are specialists in informative uh, of operation, implementation research, social assessment and impact evaluation, health system strengthening, nutrition, urban and tribal health, maternal and child health, IEC and BCC. And we are also good in uh, consultancy for quality and accreditation, digital health, due diligence studies, performance improvement, competitors, benchmarking studies, etc. And also we are good in providing a lot of training programs through Learning and Development Cell, which is headed by Mr. Piyush. Is through uh, the Training and Development Cell, we are providing a lot of training courses with respect to leadership motivation, corporate trainings, digital health, hospital management, research methodologies and statistics, health insurance, nutrition and stress management, quality, medical ethics, and legal issues. In all these four verticals, uh, we are having very good experience and we are providing a lot of uh, suggestions and to, uh, to the, all the industrial experts as well as academicians and students. Now, I, I'll be very much uh, uh, proudly introducing my director, Professor uh, Dr. Usha Manjunath Nam. And she is having a qualification with respect to qualification MSc in speech and hear, hearing from uh, I, IESH Mysore and MPhil and PhD from Bits Bilani. This is, I, I honestly and proudly say that uh, I am working with the person who has did his graduation in Bits. And it is very rare to talk with a Bits person and uh, work with them. But in that scenario, we have a very good leader is providing us the guidelines for the, uh, for engaging any of the activities. With our uh, in, uh, involvement and motivation, we are engaging this lot of seminars, uh, etc. And Madam is having 20 years of experience as a management faculty in healthcare and in general, especially with behavioral science, focus in management and entrepreneurship. She is having vast experience in academics, teaching, consultancy and research projects, training and capacity building. And uh, successfully completed various research projects funded by GOK, UNICEF, WHO, HCL Foundation, United Way, and others. And Madam is also has been invited as a guest faculty and subject matter experts for many institutions and universities. And Madam is guiding uh, PhD scholars from Amiti University, Delhi, and Manchester University, Netherlands. And also, Madam is providing a lot, lot of uh, experts panel talk. Uh, in various related areas of our expertise. Madam has published uh, articles in uh, national and international journals and uh, published a book on total quality service in healthcare in 2012. She's having a um, lot of awards in that few we mentioned here. Bharat Ratna Indra Gandhi Gold Medal Award has been awarded for her excellence by GEPRA New Delhi, March 2008. I welcome you, ma'am. 
Next, I would like to introduce uh, my faculty colleague, Mr. Piyush, who is Associate Professor and Associate Dean Trainings for IHMR Bangalore. And he is having 15 years of experience. He has gained international experience through various assignments. And I, I am working with a person who has worked in Middle East and South Asia and North Africa. And uh, he is a uh, quite interesting guy when, when we are talking with him or moving with him. The way he is approaching and tackling the situation, he is expert is in handling the issue and as well as handling the people. Uh, he is having a rich experience in healthcare consulting and he is advising clients in strategic growth and merger and acquisitions, business process consulting, operations and management and strategic expansion in various areas of healthcare delivery and hospitals. He has worked with some large health group, uh, groups in India at various strategic roles um, on, on managing Hospital purchase, operation excellence, hospital planning, growth strategies, setting up new teams and faculties. And he's having a very good track record of, record of uh, successful delivery of high value projects. He is responsible for planning, commissioning, and managing the medical services of both international circuits India. Only for Formula One racing track is 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 quite experienced only from. Uh, strategic point of view and consulting point of view, not only that, as well as how to help people when they are in critical situation. I welcome you, sir. Next, I would like to introduce the next resource person for the today's session, Dr. Sham Vasudev, founder and director for Forest Healthcare. Uh, is, uh, Dr. Sham holds a doctorate in real-time embedded systems. Uh, specializing in parallel computer architecture from Indian Institute of Science, and is a gold medalist. He, is been, he has been with uh, GC, sorry, CG Smith, Ericsson, Tata Consultancy Services, and as a director of technology at Philips, and is having uh, a quite experienced, a very well known person when it comes to hardware based antivirus solution that he has provided in the year 1990s. It is very good. One of the very good things at that time, we are not even knowing what is a computer, but you have designed a hardware that will provide an antivirus solution in 1990s. And he is also an academic, he's also in the Academic Council of Renowned Engineering Colleges. I listed a few of them here. And we have to check with sir, still any more uh, engineering colleges or institutions is guiding. And a few things I'll, I'd like to highlight here. One is PESET, SIC, SJCE, ATME, other Institute of Technology, Tijan, East West Engineering, Nandi Institute. And he's also a member of the Board of Studies of Vishweshwaraya Technological University, BMS Engineering College. His innovation in three netra, all and all in one eye screening device at Forest has won several laurels like. DST Locked uh, Martin Gold Medal, Rimmel Award, Sankalp Award, uh, CNBC TV 18 Award, Samsung Innovation Quotient Award, uh, many more awards uh, that he has received for this three And in 2016, Sarah has given uh, in, in the field of IoT uh, through Indian Congress, he has been awarded as an IoT thought leader. In 2017, uh, one of his innovative product at Forest Neo has won the Mariko Innovation, Innovation Award. And he is uh, published uh, more than 40 technical papers. 40 means it's not. Per year, one technical paper also, I guess uh, you, you might have put a lot of efforts on making this technical purpose. And he has filed more than 25 international patents and with especially five with uh, US patent grants. Sir, you are a quite uh, wonderful and amazing person. Uh, today, we are going to hear a lot from you, sir. Welcome you, sir. And uh, not, uh, but not least, uh, Dr. Jyoti R. Munavali, another resource person. Uh, uh, she is an associate professor and is, she is working with the Department of uh, uh, Electronics and Communication uh, from BNMIT. When we started this webinar thought process, uh, from the beginning, Madam used to give a lot of inputs on arranging and engaging this uh, webinar. Uh, and from BNMIT point of view, she is a, a nice coordinator to engage this webinar and, and in, in association with IHM and Bangalore and BNMIT. Dr. Jyoti R. Monavali holds a PhD in real-time scheduling in outpatient clinics from Manchester University, Netherlands. 
where she integrated her inclination towards medical science and engineering knowledge. Her research work took her to many hospitals to study different workflows and their complexities. And when you're going to one hospital and studying their workflow and providing solution for multiple hospitals means the madam is having a lot of expertise and uh, she's having more ideas and thought process into this. So today we are going to get a lot of inputs from her. And she has also worked with the world's largest eye care clinic. A few I mentioned here, uh, Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai. She studied the OPC workflow and its challenges. She has worked with various engineering colleges and she's also working with uh, uh, IHM, IHMR as a guest faculty whenever any uh, topics has been engaged in context of OPC workflow or any rela anything related to this healthcare uh, uh, stream. She is a reviewer for reputed journals and she has patent and more than 20 publications in her index journal. Her research interests are in health informatics, data analytics, real-time tracking system, operation research, artificial intelligence, all are correlated with Industry 4.0. I welcome you, ma'am. And in context to this, uh, in IHM Bangalore, we are, we are engaging a few more webinars. It's for just for your information. Homes are interested can register in, in this uh, uh, webinars. One, we are planning on 28th, and we are, our, we are having a, uh, expertized uh, panel members. And we are conducting some uh, training programs. One, on, one such is online training program on practicing public health nutrition which is scheduled between 11th to 13th May, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And we can register. And for students, we are giving a uh, minimal discount and uh, we can join this program and you can make use of it. And also we are running a nutrition and health six months course. Um, uh, we are associated through with uh, University of Mysore and we are engaging this program. And you can follow us in our website, www.ihmrbangalore.in, where we can get a lot of information about all our uh, about our institution. And from, from this website, you can follow us in Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you all. Now I'll request Dr. Jyoti Munavali, ma'am, uh, to give a brief idea about what is healthcare industry 4.0. Uh, what do you, Dr. Jyoti, ma'am? Uh, thank you, Mr. Praveen, for your introduction. Uh, yeah. uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be on this platform today and I would uh, like to uh, share my thoughts or a few, uh, just like a trailer I would like to give uh, regarding healthcare 4.0. So, yeah. So what, what exactly is healthcare? Right. So whatever we see today, when we get uh, any of the disease or ailment and then we go to hospitals or doctor and then we get uh, the medicines for that and the care for that ailment. Right. So this we generally term it as health care. But actually, this is the sick care. So once you get sick, then you are going and taking the care. Whereas what is health care then? Right. So what happens generally is whenever uh, uh, human being or whenever we have any ailments or disorders which arise in a body and then you see the symptoms and then you go to go doctor and take the medicines right this is a reactive medical intervention so whenever there is a problem you are going and uh, taking the care right so but what exactly would is health care is you have to, uh, you, we need such a system that is a healthcare system wherein instead of having the problem and then going to the care, it is you need to have prediction about your health and then prevent it from going into that stage. So that is what exactly healthcare should be. So we need to move from sick care to healthcare. So for that, we require some predictive care and preventive care. So how are we going to get this predictive care and preventive care? So for that, 
uh, it's like uh, this healthcare 4.0. So this, uh, this actually is based on industry 4.0. So as the fourth uh, revolution in the industry, that is 4.0, is uh, uh, already started and healthcare is much associated with all the technologies. So if you see around, healthcare is the industry which extensively uses the technology. So we term it as healthcare 4.0, which is in sync with industry 4.0. So for this healthcare 4.0, what exactly is uh, the things we require. The one is a digital environment where get, we get all the data. So whatever patient data and environment data, right? The, uh, the other kinds of environmental data we need. And then also the biological and, uh, environment, which is related to our internal uh, information or data. So together put it in one form would give us the healthcare 4.0. So what is the basis for this 4.0, right? Why, why exactly we had that revolution? So we have so many disruptive technologies in a previous decade. So these disruptive technologies have made the industry to revolutionize and use these technologies to greater benefit of the human being. So I would like to say a, a few words or a few uh, thoughts on this disruptive technology. So there are a couple of disruptive technologies which are being already in use in healthcare. So just uh, let's go through that uh, quickly. What are those applications of these disruptive technologies? The very first one is a 3D printing. Almost we have heard about this 3D printing. So with respect to healthcare, what all 3D printing can do is it can print the organs. It can also print the tissues and you can manage or uh, and uh, get your implants done you can have uh, organs so having these organs as such here what is being shown is easy for the trainer uh, getting trained on the uh, organs for particularly the surgeries and getting more uh, information uh, clinical information about the organs so these can also these are a part of 3d printing and also you you have implants the dental implants the, the jaw implants and also the knee replacement implants right so we have a different uh, applications of these implants also and along with that we have customized processes so if uh, um, a person is amputee then the other part of his body can be uh, done using completed using such kind of processes. So this is one of the major uh, applications of 3D printing and 3D printing is also a part of 4.0, one of the disruptive technology. And the next one is uh, artificial intelligence. We have heard a lot about artificial intelligence applied to various uh, domains or fields. And Healthcare is not behind uh, in accepting this AI. So AI is a combination of ML, DL, that is machine learning, uh, deep learning, cognitive systems. So here using these kind of technology, uh, the genomics uh, work on genomics is happening to see the gene uh, gene matching, the DNA, RNA, or uh, for particularly some, co uh, let's take an example. A recent example is a COVID case, COVID situation wherein we are, learning about the genomics. So AI uh, plays an important role here. And also the cancer. Right now we are facing a lot of issues with cancer. So like image processing is used, multiple things are used, huge data sets are used, and then you can predict what would be the state of a person after some days. So AI is one of the application for or one of the disruptive technology. And then we have augmented reality and virtual reality. So we term it as AR and VR. So this, uh, I think most of them have seen in gaming, but this is also useful in healthcare uh, prospects. So here, again, the training, the education part of the body organs uh, can be done. And then uh, the healthcare professionals can be trained on that. Assisted practices can take place uh, using this AR and VR. One thing uh, is it, it acts as a part of the therapy, particularly for uh, psychological uh, you know, therapies, uh, phobia related things, whatever phobia you have that would be easily, uh, that would be easily overcome, right? So uh, uh, VR is actually a virtual, 
virtual rea uh, virtual reality wherein in the same room where the uh, patient is there uh, uh, a scenario is created virtually they start feeling they are at the top of the building but actually they are in the same room so that type of phobia are also being removed from patients so it's a part of a therapy therapy and then we have the autonomous robots and vehicles, autonomous vehicles. So telemedicine is the best part of autonomous things. And then we also have uh, robotic assisted surgeries. So robots assist in uh, very, uh, in all the surgeries, very minute surgeries or critical surgeries. And we have robots for uh, rehabilitation centers rehabilitation things and also elderly care. So elderly care is one area where robots are playing a very important role. Along with that, autonomous vehicles. Nowadays, we are aware about the traffic issues in all the cities. So even in Bangalore, we have a lot of uh, traffic issues. So ambulance always getting stuck in this traffic, right? So we have a smart vehicles wherein the uh, ambulance is having a system wherein it can reach the hospital with the shortest distance. So these all come under autonomous robots and vehicles. So this is also an disruptive technology. Going forward, we have cloud computing, the next big thing, and blockchain. So uh, when we are taking about the financial transactions or any transactions happening with the patient data, right? So in hospitals, uh, we need to keep a track of that. We should not miss any of the transaction, right? So for that, blockchain comes to the aid. So and whatever data we are currently using in hospitals or any applications uh, which are related to healthcare, all are using healthcare cloud. So cloud is a database wherein all the data would be stored and used based on the uh, necessity. So whenever we're talking about huge set of data, patient data, required data, then the privacy and security is of utmost importance. So when we talk about privacy and uh, security, the cyber uh, attacks, all those come into picture. So this part of disruptive technology is about cloud computing and blockchain. And the most important one and more uh, relevant one here is the IoT, that is Internet of Things. So here, IoT is everything about the devices, the data, and the connectivity between them. So you can have a logistic management done. You can have integrated medicines, bed management. You can track your health. So you have a lot of wearable devices wherein you can monitor your health 24 by 7. So what it means, how it is over a period of time, how much, what is your data. So it all the, all the data can be used for predictive analytics and this predictive analytics will give you the preventive measures what you need to take. So this uh, IoT kind of thing reduces uh, healthcare cost and it uh, gives a improved treatment outcome and fewer errors are there. So IoT is a thing wherein you can use all the logistical management and also various applications. So, for example, now we can see that we have a web, uh, we have a website wherein uh, the bed management for COVID particularly is uh, right out there. So, this is one of the application of that. When we are talking about so much of disruptive uh, technologies and uh, healthcare 4.0, now our hospitals need to be smarter. So we require smart hospitals and smart healthcare. So smart healthcare in the sense we require data. Data is actually the goal. Our data is actually very important. Based on that, you can do anything, right? So when we talk about data, so we need EMRs, that is electronic medical records. So all the data to be digitized and saved. So that is EMR and EHR, so there is a difference between EMR and EHR. If your data is related to a particular uh, hospital, we refer it as EMRs. And if we can integrate all the data, uh, the da your data with all the hospitals, then we refer it as EHR. So we, uh, many hospitals have already started moving to EMR and many of them have already moved to EMR. So as we are already moving towards digital India, this is the next big step which should happen and will happen. So 
when we talk about all digitizing of data, ICT plays a very important role. And based on this ICT, that is your uh, data, you can also do a lot of analytics in managing planning of hospitals. So with this, uh, uh, the main points to note with healthcare 4.0 is the care would be patient-centered, so patient-centric healthcare. And then this 4.0 would transform the health providing accurate and personalized service. So it would be personalized for uh, different for each of the individual and it would the treatments would be in near real time as with IoT and all these things being clubbed, you are getting real time data and your treatments would be in real time. And of course, you have a lot of opportunities. And along with that, you also have challenges that could be handled easily. So here we go for healthcare 4.0. Thank you, ma'am, for the wonderful presentation about uh, healthcare 4.0. In this, madam has covered from sick care to healthcare how 4.0 is helping. She started with uh, 3D printing, IoT, AI, machine learning, AR, VR cloud computing, blockchain, uh, EMR, EHR. All the topics has been uh, given a brief uh, idea. Thank you, ma'am. Now I'd like to ask uh, the same thing from uh, our director, madam, Dr. Usha Manjinath. Ma'am, uh, everybody is talking about industry revolution 4.0 in their version. And uh, uh, from IT side and engineering side and from uh, uh, student side, it is it has been told in different, different ways. And from my point of view, I am having a different version. Now, I want to hear from you. What does that industry revolution 4.0 in healthcare mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Good evening, everyone. And uh, this is a great opportunity to discuss about industrial revolution. I'm sure, um, you know, the, the people and the audience are across various um, areas. And it's a a great pleasure to be really um, sharing the platform with Dr. Sham and um, Dr. Jyoti, of course, uh, my colleagues, uh, Priyosh and Pradeep. Um, see, the, the whole idea is as we looked at, you know, what is the progress we have made? You know, why are we making it one, two, three, four? You know, Jyoti made an awesome presentation on what is this healthcare uh, 4.0 is all about. So let's step back a little one, a little bit, and see what is this all about. I mean, how did we really um, are really looking at this as 4.0, or you know, what is all this about? So if we really take uh, the example of industrial revolution itself, I'm sure all of us know we started off with hunter gatherer agriculture and so on and so forth, and then came around 1800s. If we really see we saw uh, what is known as the industrial revolution one. So this was more of the mechanical production. Um, so the first mechanical tool, a loom came and so on. So what uh, it was, was for the industry. Industry is all about commercial as well as a product and um, it may be a service later, but at that time it was more of a product or a good. So that was in 1800s and we see that production and productivity was very important. So that became like mechanical things improved and faster. Earlier, it was all handmade, crafted, handcrafted, and so on. Whereas in mechanical production, you had different kinds of mechanical machines, which really did that. So next was like your, um, you know, uh, Industrial Revolution 2.0. Uh, here, what happened was the organizations or the factories were really organizing differently. So the division of labor, specialization became very important. Um, people, you know, really look for mass production. Um, then, of course, the big thing of electricity. Um, so this is the time, if you really see the 1900s and first assembly line was what is the, the marking uh, part of the uh, Industrial Revolution too. Um, so we move a little further. So if you see, you know, one century or so, but now the time is getting crunched. Um, so around uh, 1969, um, you know, we saw the Industrial Revolution 3.0, um, the electronics and IT. Um, I'm sure, you know, um, later I'm sure uh, Dr. Sham will be saying this, and he is a part of a large aspects of, um, you know, Industrial Revolution 3 as well as Industrial Revolution 4.0. Oh, 
and part of healthcare. And this was a, a, the first programmable PC was in 1969. And look at now, you know, where we are. After 2000, this is the digital, you know, connected world. Um, you know, who thought that uh, like invention of wheel changed human beings, same way around 2000, we say the internet changed the way people live. And uh, come to think of it, uh, we are not anywhere uh, left behind. So if we parallel that kind of one, two, three, four, you know, how does it really look in uh, from a healthcare perspective? Um, you know, healthcare all across the world, um, you know, Dr. Jyoti really uh, very clearly emphasized and said, you know, what is healthcare and what is sick care, um, you know, has uh, taken its own uh, way of doing things. And it's also a very traditional sector, uh, so to say, and has its own, uh, you know, specialized people, highly, um, you know, differently trained people. Uh, they do have a lot of technology that they use, but that's, it was initially for maybe um, very mechanical ones, a stethoscope and so on and so forth. But then, you know, uh, if we really see from the, you know, in revolution kind of things that we see, um, 1970 to 1990, the health sector saw uh, health IT systems coming into picture. So that's usually we refer to as a health 1.0. And, uh, you know, here the time crunch, you know, the, the parallelly, the technology industry is growing very fast and uh, adoptions across all industries will naturally happen. And in the next 10 to 15 years, uh, we started looking more at electronic medical records or electronic health records and networking became very, very important. So around 2005, um, so if you really see uh, 2005 marks a lot of different things for India too. Um, you know, I did my MPhil in hospital systems in 2000. Uh, we did not have a technology platform based, uh, like even telephone or, you know, uh, call center based um, emergency services. In 2005, we saw 108, um, you know, which was a highly technology platform based one. Um, so we also kind of started moving along a lot of these changes. If you really see US, I'm sure 911, if you have heard of, I mean, they had a really uh, emergency care, which was done on a technology platform so much better in terms of location, in terms of all that. But then, you know, we also kind of, um, you know, suddenly ramped up. So technology adoptions became very important for us in the last one or two decades for healthcare. Um, you know, whether it is miniaturization, whether it is, uh, um, you know, IT technologies itself and so on and so forth. So from healthcare um, 2.0, uh, around 2005, like Dr. Jyoti said about genomic information, variables, uh, integrating this EHR became um, very important. So, but now look at the time crunch. I mean, we are just here, uh, you know, we had talked about uh, way long back about telemedicine. Uh, we didn't really uh, take it off. Uh, we took a longer time for us to adopt or there was no uh, movement that was happening, but it was used as, yeah, very nice to connect to, um, people in remote areas, maybe we can train them. But here we are in just another year or two post COVID, uh, we are sitting here and everybody, every healthcare provider, many of them uh, with small clinics to big hospitals are using telemedicine itself as a um, you know, vertical where it is going to be a commercially viable option. So this is the part of the industry movement that we are seeing also. So 4.0 is all about now. In the just less than five years, we are really seeing, and um, I'm very happy, um, you know, to say that our adoption rates in these last 10 to 15 years have been uh, phenomenal. And in healthcare, just, you know, we, we were even, you know, two years back, we were talking about, uh, you know, a few things on, uh, you know, technology and so on and so forth. But here we are, you know, implementing so many more things, whether it is remote monitoring, all your home healthcare models are based on remote monitoring technology platforms. Uh, for example, NH already has blockchain implemented for you know, patient um, you know, identification and security and things like that. And this has become a, a major thing. So it is about all the technologies 4.0, what Dr. Jyoti just now said. You know, how are we really poised? I mean, are we really ready to go ahead with um, you know, taking uh, this forward. 
Um, so of course, yes, India has this. Way back in 2014, we saw internet users and we have, you know, the number has boomed. Uh, <clears throat> there's also a non-mobile push. So Bharatnet uh, from the Indian side uh, is also looking at connecting optical fibers through lakhs of gram panchayats. And one of the most successful one is what we call as Jam Trinity. That is Jandhan, <clears throat> Aadhaar, and mobile. So, you know, we have already uh, shown the, we have the, the Aadhaar number and we have the, so much of connectivity. And uh, come to think of it, we have done this in a very, very short period. So if that is the, <clears throat> you know, uh, way to go forward, you know, our healthcare and, you know, having very smart people in that, I'm sure have really ramped up and can really go ahead. And of course, uh, <clears throat> the other government push in terms of make in India, digital India, uh, the smartphone market has really, really growing. And uh, from the policy side too, so to support the healthcare 4.0, we are really looking at you know, the <clears throat> national uh, policy on electronics uh, 19, uh, 2019. And uh, we have um, you know, the other major developments which has happened just in the last uh, <clears throat> two years is national digital health mission, uh, national uh, you know, health authority and the portal that, that is there. Um, you know, we saw that, uh, you know, whether it is Arogya Setu last time, how it helped us with COVID. Now, you know, Aptamitra, e Sanjeevani, in remote areas, government is itself also being able to really implement all this. So now <clears throat> imagine what the private partners would be really be able to do. <clears throat> so, you know, healthcare also had a lot of hurdles. You know, can a prescription on a, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, e-prescription work and so on and so forth, right? So the MCI guidelines last year uh, also allowed for this to happen. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> there are so many more parallel developments that are happening. So 4.0 is all about, yes, what um, Dr. Jyoti said on the digital health. <clears throat> and all of you youngsters, as you really move ahead and want to look for various ones, this is one of the fastest and going to be the largest sector uh, to grow. So what it needs is not only doctors, nurses, technicians, and others. We need a lot of Dr. Shams, Dr. Jyotis, uh, from a technical, you know, highly technical background to be really implementing into this. And we already saw, I was like amazed to look at the number of, um, you know, patents Dr. Uh, Sham has, and I'm sure he will tell you more about it, that majority of them probably are in healthcare. Um, so if all of us bring that passion, uh, as we understand, uh, you know, we are a resource crunched one. We know at this stage of COVID how uh, it is really affecting us. And uh, maybe these kinds of technology solutions is the way forward, uh, whether it is the remote place, whether it is the, you know, connecting to uh, patients, whether we want to personalize uh, and answer that, um, you know, then the questions would be, you would think, you know, can somebody in a remote place really have access and do it? It's already happening. You know, I was in a uh, district of, uh, in a taluk of Paugada in Tumpur district in Karnataka. I mean, very remote, very dry area. They've already started using e Sanjeevani, um, Aptamitra. And these are, you know, um, uh, Ashas who are um, at, a, you know, the frontline workers. Um, and they are able to use it with their patients. They are going to help in the families, the communities. So this is all possible. I mean, so this opens up a whole lot of things. And the way, you know, I also heard uh, Dr. Sadagopin, uh, director of IIITB, uh, saying that uh, if you really compare all across, um, India has the most innovation and that's happening here. So whether it is uh, the health uh, innovative companies that's coming up, the startups that are coming up, uh, Bangalore is a home to it. Um, so there is a lot of things that are coming up in this. But you know, for all of us to be geared, to be one is the awareness, one is getting ourselves skilled and move on. So uh, healthcare 4.0 is here to stay. And um, so that's about from industrial revolution to the healthcare 4.0. Um, so I think um, you know, that kind of expands uh, what Dr. Jyoti said. And uh, back to you, Pradeep. Thank you, Ben, for your uh, wonderful information about from where we started in the earlier stages. In, uh, if you say in, in students' language, it is called history. It started in some year long, long back and slowly how we have grown and 
you have connected the dots and finally you are given a, a very good suggestion about how this healthcare 4.0 is progressing and what are the opportunities that exist thank you ma'am now uh, i'd like to ask uh, dr uh, sham sir uh, sir before asking any particular thoughts from my end i would like to ask you to give some idea about your information or understandings about 4.0 with respect to your domain specific sir you can share your screen and you can give your input sir yeah thank you uh, pradeep uh, professor pradeep uh, thanks uh, dr usha and uh, jyoti for getting this opportunity it's a great this one and thanks to you piyush nice to meet you again and basically i i i am more a practitioner i am uh, more involved with my uh, uh, work on uh, on various aspects of uh, of uh, healthcare uh, of late uh, initially i started my career with communications as i am a tele electronics and communication graduate and then did my phd in the area of high performance computing so from that to uh last uh, 25 years i've been uh, mainly working in healthcare applying all my telecom and my computing uh, capabilities so uh I, 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 jyoti has given a very good uh, very good idea about what what is this uh, industry 4.0 or or uh, healthcare 4.0 so this is very much uh, in in line with uh, iot and uh, we see that you know in industry 4.0 we have a similar uh, development and lot of it we brought it into the healthcare and uh, manufacturing so we also have manufacturing 4.0 which is the which is the most uh, uh, interesting thing now what's happening and we are all doing a lot of work in these areas so let me quickly uh, get to the implementation part of it we also call this uh, healthcare uh, 4.0 uh, this is technology driven by iomt so that is internet of medical things okay so internet of medical things is uh, the real addition which actually made it 4.0 in the earlier ones uh, healthcare 1.0 it was more of it just it billing system and all that 2.0 came with a little bit of uh, medical records and uh, data storage and things like that uh, 3.0 was with uh, imaging and uh, we started to get some standards for image exchange and all that and in 4.0 we have i connectivity that is iomt so that's a, that's a thing so along with this you know the technology changes we also see there is a lot of change in the architecture of systems so if you see a healthcare system of today it's more of a device centric that is most of the time it is mobile centric i would say and either you use a mobile or you use something connected with the mobile through iot so the device plays a very important role so even if you are having a big mri which is costing around 15 crore people want an interface to it so that you know they can see the scan on their mobile so to that level it has gone okay so a device plays a very dominant role here and that is the main human machine interface okay it's a hmi okay and because that is the interface everybody wants to see that you know it is well tested it's also you know you are trying to put something when earlier you know all these sort of equipment you know the scanners and mri ct whatever you say the images were also not available to everybody only the radiologist would have a look at it and a radiologist is a very highly qualified person you know they would have done a lot of uh, 18 years of uh, one you know to get that to that stage so whereas in case of in today's world you know in 4.0 these things are becoming you know available on in the hands of everybody so that is why it has to be tested very thoroughly you have to take care of lot of things uh, at any point you know there should not be any any errors and uh, that can lead to a real uh, either a breach of security or uh, privacy 
or it can lead to you know some somebody's life it can cause somebody's life damage to somebody's life so it is so serious so that is why you know this has to be thoroughly tested and this is a device which has connectivity obviously so it's a predominantly a mobile platform i would say not not only mobile but it's a mobile platform so today we have various equipment which come with this connectivity okay then around that you know we have the applications these are really the mobile apps as you say there are different type of apps available today and uh, these apps are invariably connected to the cloud because all the data you know in the app is all stored in the cloud and uh, they also have a lot of social media integration like facebooks or uh, linkedin or whatsapp so many of the social media social media applications are integrated in to, to to this app and there could be some things which jyoti was showing that exercising and all that so you have intelligent watch you know which actually keeps capturing all this information all that can be put together to make meaningful information out of it and that is the power of 4.0 actually and these application these apps are written by several people so normally the device has a sort of an open interface uh, or apis we say and uh, app, uh, we write the applications on top of it. apps are developed by several people in a day you know there are more than uh, 10000 apps you know which uh, which get published then once this app is there this, this apps can help people in disease management today's biggest problem is how do i manage the disease and how do i get monitored today everybody you know who is having covid if they start running to the hospital you are all seeing the uh, problem that do they all need to go to the hospital can they not stay at home and get remotely monitored all these things are very in- interesting things which are happening and as we are talking a lot of things are changing so there is a very strong push towards uh, home health care and also uh, remote management and these sort of applications will help in doing that and in turn you know it will help in optimizing the resources so that we can get more from less okay that is the that is the mantra what we apply and uh, that is in workflow optimization and on top of that you know you can now have services so these services are like ppp service today you see healthcare system it is not no longer run by only one hospital or one is one is one there is the government runs these in a big ppp mode so there is a public private participation as we say and what this does this will basically enroll all the resources what is available and then you know people with public or the the government or uh, mainly the private people will bid for these services and they will be in a position to fix some sort of a pricing okay and then there is another partner who is putting the infrastructure and then the whole system is run and there are dashboards and you know monitors available in the uh, healthcare offices where they are remotely in a position to see how things are going on how many people are getting screened how many are getting treated all sorts of things you know and what is the payment to be done everything is available in you know in in a central place uh, and it is also available on mobile phones uh, depending on who the, who is uh, accessing this information so this is simple uh, just to give you a quick example you know i ha- i have my company called toros health which actually makes ophthalmic screening eye screening devices and the whole of andhra pradesh we have put this device along with apollo health net who is a service provider okay apollo health net is a is a uh, they are a health care service provider so they Uh, do the tele ophthalmology or telemedicine equipment is given by us we put the equipment and this is put in all the public health care centers phcs across andhra pradesh okay so this entire 500 600 phcs where they these uh, devices are placed they are all monitored centrally uh, from one place by the health care uh, officers 
so that way it is possible to cover every individual there now can get their eye screened for example now you have covin app okay so you see the covin app also is a fantastic uh, system like this and there are people now who will be getting in now you know 18 to 45 years there will be so many private hospitals also who will enroll for doing the service so how will they get the supply how will they manage this how will they get their payment all that is going to be controlled by this covin app you see one single portal but then offering a whole lot of solution so that is the power of these services on top so this is big data this is cloud enabled this is what you know we are seeing uh, already happening and i i can tell you proudly we are the only country in the world actually having such a large system and we have the ayushman bharat program which is the world's largest health assurance program half a billion population is covered under that so you can you can see that you know we have advanced so much so if somebody wants to ask healthcare 4.0 i want to see some real application they have to come to india okay so that is the, that is the architecture so this is the first thing what i wanted to show you uh, how this architecture is how do you realize this to realize that you know you need a big platform and today most of these platforms are available to you they are all on a subscription basis you don't have to buy the software earlier days we had to buy oracle we had to buy uh, sap we had to buy so many big uh, very large software you know which is very expensive and they also needed very big machines to run them and then you needed terabytes of data to be backed up okay but now all that is gone today everything is in the cloud okay so you have the data platform we are using the aws architecture that is the amazon platform and then this has standard interfaces to all sorts of data sources and uh, structured data unstructured data everything and it has this iot interface to the devices okay the devices are like you know they can be a mobile phone they can be a, a bp apparatus or a glucometer or a pulse oximeter or it can be an mri machine ct scanner whatever everything today is is iot enabled that is iomt as we say and they this can be uh, directly interface to this platform so the data will be continuously uh, uploaded onto the system okay and now on this data the data has to be organized and that will be organized with respect to the patient id okay there is a unique id needed for the patient and now you can see how we are connecting things unique id you know was not there in india so we had aadhar aadhar has been put in place and with aadhar today we have the unique id and everything is with respect to aadhar okay so reimbursement happens through aadhar identification happens to aadhar direct money transfer happens through aadhar everything you know that is the thing that's what we need and then on top of that we are having this machine intelligence uh, which we put in through machine learning so there are again platforms like adobe and all that so we use them and then you know we do this machine learning and what does it do it basically tries to take this data and see you know for a particular application how it has to be done so then there is a, the, like for example you have the above you have cardiology application where you know you can send a ecg i have a wearable ecg if i am iot enabled then i can just transmit the ecg to the data platform it goes and on a click of a button and that will be sent here and then the machine learning would have understood that and it will say whether this is a normal or an abnormal case if it is an abnormal one it will immediately see which is the resource available so it will send it to the cardiologist or a electrocardiography system where they do a cardio electro cardiologist or whatever they they will be looking at the cardio of the, the ecg and immediately they will be in a position to report from their mobile phone or whatever form factor they have so that way the person wherever they are can get an ecg read by the top specialist okay and they get the result within a few minutes so this is the power of such a system
So like that, we have made this sort of system for cardiology. We have also uh, something for retina, uh, that is diabetic retina. People with diabetes have a risk of getting uh, blind. So to prevent that, you know, we have a mechanism by which, you know, we can read that. So uh, initial work was done by the machine. Okay. And seeing normal or abnormal. Only those which are abnormal will be triaged and then sent to the specialist, super specialist. Then for nephrology also, we have a system like that. So like that, you know, we have gone developing these things. Other than that, what you also see is a workflow. Now we talk about disease management. What we mean by that is, now for those who are having uh, today's world, non-communicable diseases is a bigger burden than communicable disease. I should not tell it very loudly now because of the COVID. Co uh, but generally, you know, in normal in environment, NCDs are the big problem, right? Among them, diabetes, hypertension, COPD, these are all some of the NCDs. Even cancer today is considered as a non-communicable disease, right? Uh, so these things need management. That means once a person gets this problem, it is no solution for that. They have to continuously keep on going back and they have to get their health checkup and then, you know, consult the doctor and the doctor will tell what, what they have to do. So this entire workflow, as we say, has to be executed. And this cannot happen for everyone because everyone can't go, keep on going to the hospital, right? So people want to do this at home and that is the best thing to do. So the, through this uh, uh, machine learning and interfaces, we have the entire workflow system. In fact, Dr. Jyoti's uh, thesis was also on this sort of a system for ophthalmology. So that is also programmed on this uh, platform. And how do you train people to use this? For that, you know, we have the e-learning module, which will help them to remotely get trained. And they can take the course anytime they want. If somebody wants to launch a new product, then they can actually make a nice uh, e-learning module and put it on this so that then anybody can access this sir, and Dr. then Shams, understand. Sir. Yeah. Dr. Sham, sir, uh, yeah. since you have limited time. Uh, so so this, is, uh, this is what I wanted to uh, share with you guys because IOT or IOMT or industry, uh, healthcare 4.0 is all about the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, uh, access to uh, various data, and then, you know, applications which are sitting on top of this and helping one to basically uh, manage things in a much more remote way, remotely, and also bring healthcare much closer to the people rather than people going to the hospital. Hospital will go to the people. That is the, that is the paradigm shift what we see with healthcare product zero. So with these two, I would like to leave it at here so that, you know, we have, you know, we can go to the examples later if there is any questions. Okay, thank you for your brief uh, introduction about uh, IOMT, sir. And you have nicely narrated again, uh, Health 1.0 with billing, 2.0 with medical records, 3.0 with uh, imaging exchange and 4.0. And finally, you're connected with your domain specific topic. You have nicely compiled the things and we have many more things to learn from you, but due to uh, uh, time constraint, uh, uh, we, are, we are not able to learn more from you, sir. In some other session, no uh, we'll, we'll learn a few more things from whatever your expertise you are having. Um, now, I'll be asking, I'll be moving on to Mr. Piyush. Uh, Mr. Piyush is having quite a experience in industry with respect to healthcare, and he has worked in uh, some uh, broad countries in some healthcare domain, hospitals, etc. The question is, um, are the... Uh, Ecosystem, and you're talking about the ecosystem, how the industry ecosystem is changing with respect to healthcare 4.3. Actually, is it changing or is it we are trying to uh, show like uh, we are adopting technologies or we are we are failing miserably? And if you are adopting, are there any changes in the business model to be made? How shall the companies ensure to be part of this? So this question may be tricky for uh, others to understand, but I want you to uh, give a brief idea about 
Actually, what type of business model is utilized in improving the industry ecosystem with respect to healthcare? Sir, you're muted, sir. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you, Pradeep, sir. Uh, see, my fellow colleagues have already briefed about what Healthcare 4.0 is. They have spoken about technologies, the tools, and the hands and brains, I would say, of Healthcare 4.0 coming from Industry 4.0. And when we utilize it into healthcare 4.0, healthcare, then it becomes healthcare 4.0. Now, one thing, a very basic thing to understand is that uh, uh, in my perspective, the very, very base of this healthcare 4.0 revolution lies in the availability of internet. Uh, it's just because of the internet that we are able to transmit the data and capture the data. Imagine at this moment itself, if we switch off the internet connectivity, Data would be generated, what we are doing in the system, but that would not be captured at a central console. We have to go to individual desktop, laptop, smart phones, and then we have to collect the data. So the basics lies in the internet. Now, because of internet, we are generating so much of data, even a mobile single click, open on the app you click, the website you visit, everything is trackable now. Now, when we come to this in healthcare, Healthcare actually works for people and the kinds of trends we observe in people is defined something, uh, the basics of the industry, the way human society evolves, the way they start functioning with technology, their demand changes. And similarly, the industry has to adopt. So as this point of time, I say, if I, we see technology, the latest trend in technology, they are the biggest game changer in the way we live at in a nutshell, if you see, everything has been drilled down to one single smartphone. A lot of applications, a lot of devices which we used to use earlier, watches, calculators, uh, magnetic compasses, so many things have actually gone back and it comes under one smartphone. And in India, the penetration of smartphone is very, very humongous. We, are, we will be close to like 850 million people by the end of 2022. So we have penetration of internet is more nearly 40, 45% as compared to health insurance. So when I talk to these consumers who are very, very tech savvy, who are on internet, who demand quick services and with convenience, then definitely healthcare also has to adopt to these changes. Now, when I talk about internet-based business model, the difference which is in the existing business model and I, when I talk about the futuristic business model is that at this point of time, if I go and I have to build a healthcare facility as we have been building uh, in healthcare 3.0, the focus was on big hospitals. We had uh, you know, the emergence of the corporate chains in India. So when you create a hospital to give healthcare delivery, you need a lot of investment. Now, for a tertiary care hospital, nearly 1 to 1.2 crores rupees are required per bed if you want to create a good tertiary care hospital. So imagine an investment of 100 or 200 crores, which you need to keep aside. And then the kind of risk which you involve in running that business, and in fact, something happens or it doesn't kicks up, then the entire investment is at stake. What do you do with it? So with the people demand changing, the industry is also adapting and the more of the platform based model, as Dr. Shyam has also pointed out, that the things are moving towards platform. So now in healthcare, we also have seen an emergence of platform based model. When I talk about platform, they are basically like the apps which you talk about, your Practos and others. I um, mean, the common would understand is like Amazon and Flipkart. So these are like platform based model, which actually work in virtual workspace and then bring so many services together and things mostly happens at the back end. So we have spoken about the investment and this now. So that, is, that comes a very, very basic thing. So when I have, at one point of time, I have an option to go for a very, very asset light model. When I divert, start developing a platform, I do not have a risk of physical infrastructure. I invest in manpower. I invest in digital technology. And then I have an option of scalability. I can scale that one particular platform to hundreds and millions of people. As Amazon, Flipkart, all these companies are doing. They are not restricted to a certain set of people. They enhance their platforms and they are scalable. So sitting at one point from one single app, I can target entire world. 
while if i build a one particular facility i have a limited number of people coming to my hospital or to a clinic so at one point of time my investments are low and then i have a, an option to easily diversify my services so if you see a company something like uh, your medlife like any e pharmacy so when this covid situation come we already have a question from uh, suguna that how healthcare 4.0 is involved in covid so this will give you an idea about this because of covid the traction for online consultation started so if you go and track the records of these companies e pharmacies they generated more business from online consultation vis a vis their e, e pharmacies now why it was possible because of the platform based model i could easily add on one service i can tie up with people to support that service i integrate my supply chain make it more stronger and then i can offer multiple services at a single platform just imagine that how amazon came during this covid 19 you know the company which was delivering just basic things groceries now the no normal household things they came into amazon fresh they came into amazon pantry up to the level of delivering liquor at home so this offers me a lot of scalability and i can diversify my business very easily so this reduces the investment which i need to in, uh, have for my this uh, physical infrastructure so i improve my profitability i improve my scalability and i can target more and more consumer offering multiple services to my consumer now rather than just offering online this like consultation or e pharmacy from a platform based model you can target multiple services you just have to have the patient once on board let's say for consultation then after consultation he would need pharmacies you start offering e pharmacies then he would need diagnostic test also you start having a sample collection things also then he would require home care as dr shyam has also pointed out so you can offer home care services as well so this is where the healthcare industry is moving forward just because of the technologies which we have and largely enabled by internet and then further taken by the data which we generate because of internet we generate data at each and every point so that gen data when we collate and when we analyze it gives us a lot of deep understanding about the consumer which we are talking to it's like some monitoring somebody 24/7 understanding his patterns why what he is doing why he is doing what he will do next a predictive analysis and based on that you start feeding your consumer so this is where the healthcare is moving forward now the business models will be more talking about the platforms they will be asset light and they will be scalable because uh, it offers me the convenience of interoperability also my data can be shifted from one place to another very easily and that is what something the consumers are also looking for as of date we and this covid 19 has given it a great push because now again since in bangalore we have uh, locked down for next 14 days in this scenario if somebody has to go for an rt pcr test somebody needs e pharmacy is delivered at home or any kind of service platform based operators are the only option we have and this thing once you start using you understand the importance and then gradually it becomes a habit imagine the time when retail came on to online space so people were very hesitant buying clothes online how can i buy clothes online the it wouldn't fit because we were into a habit of going to the stores and then purchasing fitting in trial room but once the convenience has come that you buy you try if doesn't fit you can return it back see the amount of traction the retails this apparel retails has generated this mantra has generated in the recent years that is how the healthcare also is changing now we look for the critical things when we come to hospitals in case of admissions in the hospital in case of icu care or surgery care that is something which is unavoidable or not possible uh doing online but anything which is possible online is coming to this platform so that is how we are actually changing and that is how covid 19 has given a good very very good push so if you see lot of 
non healthcare players or non traditional players are also a kind of investment which you see from the private equity funds from china from singapore malaysia they are investing in india and many of them are non healthcare i mean if you see the google itself google is there amazon is there they are all venturing into healthcare even facebook somewhere they are connected so that is how the this platform based actually models have changed the healthcare industry and you would see more and more of non healthcare players coming into it because technology is relatively easier to create and easy to manage and easy to scale also so uh, that's what i have uh, to say on this any questions i would like to take up uh, thank you mr piyush uh, you have given a, a brief introduction and idea about what is a business model starting with internet how we are using internet for improving the business uh, from uh, investment from investment to availability scalability and adaptability yeah it's a very uh, useful uh, information now i'll request all the resource person since we are having another 15 minutes of time uh, i want you to give a brief uh, about uh, uh, in 2 to 2 minutes about a uh, few thoughts like um, fee for service will it be overcome if 4.0 is implemented i want to hear from uh, 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 Dr. Usha Manjurat, ma'am, if uh, implemented to promote the value-based treatment or patient centricity, whether the purpose will be met by using this four points? Yeah, in fact, um, you know, fee for service is how um, charging is done at the healthcare. So we are already uh, on it. So let us take, for example, if you are taking even Ayushman Bharat or any health insurance. so all that is for the kind of service that you have received it is a package so we call it as a bundled a price um so whether a government pays so there is a payer there is a patient there is a provider so if i'm really looking at that um, in fact it has already gone into the fee for service uh, mode um, which is already like you know you will tell you like even during covid i'm sure you know you get home health care for 10 day package Uh, 14 day package so they will tell you you know how many uh, doctor visits that is online visits one day in uh, one uh, this one two three uh, nursing checks and a physician consultation so they actually is a bundled one so whatever service that is provided to you uh, it is uh, you know charged and that is called as a fee for service and fee for service is the most um, you know um, easiest way and that's how things are actually moving so you know dr jyoti was also saying we have to move to healthcare whether it is a, a prevention say for example executive health check all this again are a fee for service so you know whether you do it through the um, you know technology platform based uh, services that you are actually accessing or it is a hybrid one so there is some part of you know you are uh, pre hospitalization you have certain uh, services given to you post hospitalization certain services given to you so during hospitalization that certain services given to you all this is going to be on the bundled one say for example ayushman bharat itself has 1578 packages out of that 612 surgeries are there and then you have uh, procedures 1052 procedures and the 260 medical ones so again it's a fee for service whatever service that the patient gets now the next question is are we ready to move for a future of value based healthcare so where you are going to do a um, you know value based uh, kind of um, fee i think that's a little too way long off uh, but then what do i really mean by value based uh, pricing uh, is where based on the outcomes we get so you know it is not what service i get yes i get those services but on you know proportionately what is the based on the outcome so you know i think that will take a very a longer time to move ahead uh, currently whether it is um, you know various um, you know payers or direct payment or whatever so it is more of a you know fee for service contract that is happening now and in fact uh, i think that is the most useful one in even in your uh, platform based services as well as in your direct uh, facility based services or in a clinic based services so you are very clear it is a fee is a contract so the provider and the patient makes a contract all right and then the payer comes into picture if is a you know you are protected or you are in a health insurance 
or you're in a health assurance program of Ayushman Bharat um, or whichever. So uh, that's that's the fee for service as of now. Um, that's from me. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Jyoti, um, are we uh, really ready or what we really need in this four point? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. So are we ready or what, what is that we need? Uh, basically, uh, 4.0, that is healthcare 4.0, is technology driven. So whether uh, we like it or not, or whether we accept it or not, technology forms the base for this. Uh, and we have to accept it. Yeah, there are certain hindrance while uh, starting immediately because of uh, bandwidth, internet connectivity, and even the data portability. There are certain uh, issues, but uh, of course uh, we can overcome those uh, with the time. Uh, basically, I would like to say about data portability, uh, wherein uh, now if uh, you use your uh, uh, hospital app and if you are given some blood test or if you are given some x-rays, whatever kind of uh, test you have given, uh, you can view them in your app, right? So that kind of portability is already there with our hospital systems. Uh, with our EMR kind of things, uh, but within the network, that is with, uh, within uh, different hospitals, yes, we, uh, it's a challenge of interoperability and we have to work on that. So because uh, two different hospitals would use two different EMRs, right? EMR from company A and EMR from company B. So there we need to have a sync Whatever fields I use, I'm talking a bit of technical thing, uh, whatever fields I use to collect the data from the patient, the same kind of fields, the same kind of specification should be used by all the companies who are working on EMR. So there we need to make certain uh, standardization and certain policy uh, to come up with that. Uh, definitely we can go ahead with this uh, help uh, 4.0. We have a lot of opportunities. Over to you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Uh, Shyam, sir, uh, your question will be, uh, whatever question I'm planning in my mind, like, are we Indians are ready? Uh, Madam has given an overview, like, uh, it's like 4.0 is what we really need in this. I'm asking you in a different way. Are we Indians are ready to take care of this? What is your views? Yes. See, the good thing about this is, it is a very opportunistic thing for our Indians because we at least are very good at our IT, right? So if you see world over, if I say I am from India, they will say, oh, are you uh, IT, IT specialist or something like that, right? So that way, we have a good uh, IT industry around us and we are doing really good on IT. And industry 4.0, what it says is our uh, healthcare 4.0 is a whole lot of integration of not the medical device and all that it is of course you have to add iot to it but it is more of the machine learning ai and uh, those sort of things so that way we have an edge for the rest of the world to really do a lot more on uh, industry or uh, healthcare food or zero so that is a a, a, a good opportunity for us. It's a sweet spot, I would say. And the second important thing is everything you know here works on big data. And you need a lot of data for all this. And that you cannot find, you know, many people in, in India, we have so many patients and our population is so large. So a typical learning session, which takes around uh, machine learning, deep learning, which takes around... Uh, maybe a year or something in the Western world could be done, you know, in a month, you know, in India because of the huge amount of data. So that is the other important aspect. And the third important aspect is the ecosystem, what we have. We have fantastic doctors, specialists, super specialists, and all of them talk English. You see, that is a very important thing because I work with universities abroad the biggest problem there is language. Here, you know, we have English as the language medium of communication. And what we can do is collaborate much faster, much easily and uh, build up this knowledge base. So 
this is going to become the gold mine i would say and uh, we are uh, really poised to succeed in this thank you sir uh, from uh, your view dr jyoti views and from director madam view i got a doubt like uh, are the machines are going to replace or it will be a substitute uh, for this uh, uh, human human uh, mankind so you sir do you think uh, uh, this health 4. Point, healthcare 4.0 will be a substitute for human jobs uh, see uh, uh, technology has Shall been there for very very yeah so uh technology has been there for a very very long time yeah. i mean when you were supposed to be at yeah you you asked about the jobs right whether technology will take over the jobs or not yeah we are right sir so uh, it's such to whether yeah. this healthcare 4.0 will be correct see technology has always been there when we were also small we had telephones before that we had telegrams but still i mean we still have a lot of people uh, who can actually uh, this industry is moving on we have every year graduates passing on from the college and getting jobs and if you see the statistics with the help of this technology the kind of uh, startup culture which has emerged is a phenomenal push to job industry i mean and if you specifically talk about india we are among the few countries who produce the your uh, biggest startups across the world then we are among the leading one in in terms of attracting investments so even in the healthcare sector technology only changes from traditional jobs to the futuristic jobs the only change which comes is the kind of skill set which you need to work in that environment now we have different kinds of skill set emerging when we talk about technology we have smart wearables we have data analytics coming in so data analytics internet all this technology they can help us to improve the efficiency of our work as we have spoken about the scalability with the help of technology we can talk to so many people at one place it improves efficiency of our work but still there needs human intervention robotics are there which uh, whom you can operate with more precision with more accuracy but again at the back end doctor is there so the skill set or the human touch will never phase out from the industry just because of technology is there no matter how many te- much technology is there the human intervention will always be there but the skill set will change so when we talk about if somebody is afraid of the technology that it might take over the kind of work so it has been happening but again the new jobs have been created if you go back to see the manufacturing industry there is service lines were actually been done by human beings long time back when they were replaced by this uh, conveyors belts and other machineries so the new kind of demand to manage these uh, skill set to manage these machineries emerged but the difference was that rather than just packing or punching the screws you need to have a different kind of skill set and that is what is happening right now now when we talk about the academic curriculum also even at ihmr we are including digital health digital marketing and entrepreneurship and innovation so these kind of skill set are what actually required and which will help anyone to navigate so that is the only shift which is happening the jobs are still there but with a different skill set technology will not take it away even into healthcare healthcare has a high demand of manpower we still have this 0.9 doctors per 1000 population 0.9 nurses per 1000 population so technology is only helping us to improve the accessibility of healthcare now to manage that we again need a huge amount of manpower so there is no dearth of jobs in healthcare industry technology has in fact created more kind of jobs but skill set is different that's the only thing thank you just sir just to just one point to add yes sir see in india we have uh, 270 lakh babies born every year out of which 40 lakh are born prematurely and you know these premature babies they have a problem of 
getting blind within the first six weeks because of the problem of uh, ROP, retinopathy of prematurity, or they have the heart problem, which is not muscle not fully developed. The heart can wait, but the eye can't wait because it's only six weeks it gives before the baby gets blind. So now to check that, you know, we have 200 pediatric ophthalmology, just 200 in this country, 200 for 40 lakh. So to solve this problem, we have made a device which is IoT enabled screening device. It is actually taken by the, uh, we trained the SNICU technician there to actually image the baby's eye. And immediately this is sent to the doctor. It will actually do a machine learning. Uh, it will actually do a first level triaging. If it is normal, it will not do, uh, no, it will say, okay, no problem. If there is abnormality, it will send it to the pediatric ophthalmologist. He will see on the mobile and report. Today, with that mechanism, we are in a position to basically eradicate this problem of ROP, blindness due to ROP in the whole of Karnataka and now Kerala state. That way. So you see, if not for this technology, if not for this IoT and if not for this uh, healthcare 4.0 and all that, we would have put 2 lakh babies blind into the society every year. 2 lakh every year. So you see, now that is getting avoided. And that's a huge impact and a huge saving, right? So there are so many things, you know, in which technology cannot be, uh, you know, technology is the only solution, I would say. And putting the right technology is also very important. Yeah, just to um, add to that, if I may, um, say, uh, for example, you know, like one, he gave an example there. See, in an ICU, the, um, you know, the nurse, is, you know, all the time, uh, if she had to really look at all the vitals, look at all the individual devices, giving information, you know, coordinate, put that, you know, she's looking at all the machines all the time. Now, the machine has got so smart that it will integrate all this and give an alert, give an this one. So the nurse can actually spend more time, quality time with the patient. So that's another advantage that we have. And we are really looking at, you know, it is not that... Uh, like uh, Piyush was highlighting, yes, the skill sets. Like Dr. Shang said, uh, there are so many, um, you know, uh, pediatric ophthalmologists looking at it, but how are they going to look? They can really look at in the last stage of it, but there are so many new jobs in between where somebody is collecting that, uh, you know, testing the baby, you know, somebody is uh, feeding that data. So there are different kinds of jobs generated. So yes, at one end, it seems like, you know, same thing happened for banking sector, for example. You know, they all yes. thought when computers came, uh, you know, they were banking system was so scared that the jobs will go away. The jobs didn't go away. The kind of uh, things that they were able to do changed. So they had to be skilled. They had to be tech savvy. And uh, just to kind of highlight one thing, are we ready? I think we are really much more than ready. And I think we are already in 4.0. And, uh, you know, like uh, Dr. Sham said, or even uh, many people are saying, I think our, you know, we didn't have a lot of things which uh, the system, legacy systems we didn't have in healthcare because our healthcare building up was uh, slow and, you know, it was not so standardized and all. So now we are ready for trying out anything. So I think we don't have that uh, fear of trying new things. And uh, with IT people, with so much of technologists, um, you know, smart people around, um, we are ready to really go ahead and do it. And uh, like I said, you know, people, youngsters, I mean, India has a very young population and uh, they, they are very smart with technology. They have grown up with technology. So as they start implementing, their thinking, their way of uh, putting is going to be very different. So definitely we are ready. Uh, like I would really second the uh, skill set part and uh, new kinds of jobs will come. And I think uh, there is no need to fear. Um, in fact, if I really look at when we passed out of our MSc and all, where we had jobs, there was nothing that we were, you know, nobody was telling us. But now there are so many opportunities for youngsters. Yes, it's a highly competitive world. Uh, they have to be really skilled. They have to be really focused. And in healthcare, there are two aspects. There is a doctor who treats. There is a patient who needs that help. 
So between that is where we are going to operate. So we have to be really understanding certain aspects of the, you know, aspects of how the, you know, healthcare works and how the patient requires. So if I want to make it more and more patient centric, um, you know, and I want to be really human uh, approach, uh, I have to understand from these two perspectives and the rest, I think, uh, you know, the technology will really, um, you know, provide fantastic platforms. One thing uh, I understood from uh, all the resource person, this one and a half hours is not sufficient and even <laughs> it will not give us a percentage of information about what is uh, healthcare uh, uh, 4.0, which is performing. And uh, uh, a lot of questions are there in chat. Actually, I thought like uh, 20 minutes I'll spend with the students for this question and ask, but still the time is crossing and um, uh, others are having some important schedule. So uh, for, I, I don't know how to complete this uh, question and answers for the question, but still I'll suggest, I'll do one thing. I'll download the chat. I'll uh, take it all the questions and I'll share with the resource person. You can give your answers and in turn, I'll forward the answers to the uh, participants, those who are asked that question. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, I would uh, thank all the resource person, Dr. Usha Manjunath, ma'am, uh, Dr. Jyoti Munawali from uh, BNMIT, Dr. Sham sir, and uh, Dr. Pew sir for your wonderful uh, information about uh, what is healthcare 4.0. Thank you all. Uh, uh, Pradeep, I want to just add it. Uh, healthcare is an evergreen field. So there is no death for job or anything else. Thank you. Pradeep ji, I mean, if I can take two minutes, uh, there is some debate going on uh, PPP model and public and private sector. So I just like to just add two points over it. See, it's not about public or private. I mean, if it is only public, then also it's a challenge. We have seen in Western countries also. Yes. And if it is only private, then it's a challenge because it's expensive and people have to pay out of pocket. So PPP is a middle way. Yes, but then again, in the PPP, to make it happening and to make it actually 100% accurate or any model, the main thing which is required is the stringent regulation from the government side. Now, India is a country which has evolved very, very naturally. Things have come up. Private hospitals have come up. They have different standards. Everybody has different pricing policy, different kind of terminologies are being used. So in this scenario, the only thing which works out is having a very, very stringent set of rules and regulation and strict monitoring, which has happened somewhere in past four or five years. We have strict controls from the government over stents and other things over the pricing policies as well. But this is actually being now more deeply being tackled because of technology. So now if there is a system we talk about where government can monitor all the private hospitals that what they are doing on daily basis. We have specific codes, uh, D DRG codes, which actually they can monitor whether this patient needed this care or not, how much he has been charged. And if we have a standard platform, which monitors or categorize hospitals into different categories, they have different pricing policies, they have different infrastructure. In this way, then even private and public, both can function very, very smooth. So that is what something the, is lacking as of now when we talk about India, which I think largely can be tackled by this technology itself. If we can monitor the data and bring everyone on same platform, which somewhere it is happening with the Jam Trinity coming in. Now you have NDHM coming in. You somebody's mentioned about Disha also. We are talking about data stringent, like when I can have control over my data. That can lead to different kind of business model where I can even charge for data I share. In that case, it becomes opportunity for the consumer and for the companies as well to use it. So the control and restrictions and the regulations are, is the key to manage this healthcare industry. Thank you, Mr. Piyush. Um, now you, you might have got one idea for creating one course on industrial healthcare 4.0. Maybe a 10 day session or a 20 day session we'll plan so that our participants, whatever the queries they asked and whatever the inputs we are having, we can detailly explain them. Again, um, uh, I'm, since the time is, we don't have enough time, I should conclude this session. Thank you all for your enough time and patience and giving your valuable inputs to all of us. Thank you participants for your time and sh sharing your asking questions and know all living yourself. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you everyone. You. Thank you Bye -bye. all the participants. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.